This is the patient assessment management medical skill. In this skill, you have 15 minutes to perform your assessment, patient interview, and voice treat all conditions discovered. You should conduct your assessment as you would in the field, including communicating with your simulated patient. You may remove the simulated patient's clothing if you feel it is necessary. As you progress through the skill, you should state everything you're assessing, specific clinical information not obtainable by visual or physical inspection. For example, a blood pressure should be obtained from the simulated patient just as you would in the out-of-hospital setting. You may assume you have two partners working with you who are trained to your level of care. They can only perform the interventions you indicate necessary, and I will acknowledge all interventions you order. I may also supply additional information and ask questions for clarification. Do you have any questions? No. Your scenario, you are dispatched to a private residence for a mid-50-year-old male who is complaining of chest pain. You may begin. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put on my proper PPE. Is my scene safe? Your scene is safe. PPE is noted. Okay, so I have one adult male patient in his mid-50s. Nature of illness appears to be chest pain. At this point in time, I will be requesting ALS backup, and I do not see the need to apply a seat collar. So as I approach, forming my general impression, I have an adult male in his mid-50s sitting in his chair, clutching his chest. Next thing I want to do is determine his level, level of consciousness, so I'm going to go ahead and address my patient. So hi, sir. My name is Abby. I'm an EMT. Is it okay if I hi. ask you some questions? Yes. Okay, so sir, what is your name? Ron. Okay, Ron, and do you know where you are right now? At my home. Okay, and do you know what year it is? 2022. Okay, and do you know why I was called out here today? I'm experiencing some chest pain. Okay, so my patient appears to be alert and oriented times four, and he has a chief complaint of that chest pain. Next thing I want to do, does my patient have any life threats? He does not have any life threats. Okay, so for airway, my patient's airway appears to be patent and open because he's able to have a conversation with me. Next thing I want to do is check for breathing. First thing I'll do is go ahead and put a pulse ox on his finger. So if you can have your finger, please, then you can go ahead and rest it down onto your thigh there. Okay. So what is that pulse ox reading? 93%. Because of that low pulse ox reading, I'm going to go ahead and start him on two liters of oxygen via nasal cannula. And then what is the rate, rhythm, and quality of my patient's breathing? Regular rhythm, regular rate, irregular tidal volume. Okay, so next thing we're going to go ahead and check for is circulation. So, sir, if I could have the inside of your wrist, please. I'm going to be checking for that radial pulse. How does the pulse feel? Strong, rapid, and regular. Okay, and next thing I want to do is check for my patient's skin signs. How does my patient's skin appear? Pale, cool, and diaphoretic. And is there any bleeding? You do not note any bleeding. Okay, so based on the assessment I've just done on my patient, this is a priority patient, so we're gonna load and go. We will continue our assessment further along. Next thing I wanna do is we wanna go through OPQRST, which is gonna be onset, provocation, quality, radiation, severity, and time. So sir, did this pain come on suddenly or gradually? <clears throat> Very suddenly. Okay, and is there anything you do that makes the pain feel better or worse? It's feeling worse just sitting here right now. Okay, and could you describe how the pain feels for me? I feel a lot of pressure and a slight burning sensation. Okay, if you could use one of your fingers, can you go ahead and point exactly on your chest where the pain hurts? Right, in the center of my chest. Okay, and is that pain moving anywhere? Does it travel or radiate anywhere else on your body? It's moving up towards my jaw. Up towards your jaw, okay. And if you had to rate this pain on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst pain you've ever experienced, what would you rate it? I would say a seven. Okay, and when did this pain start? Around an hour ago. Okay, so now that we've finished OPQRST, we're gonna go through our sample history, which is signs and symptoms, which we just covered with OPQRST, allergies, medications, patient past medical history, last oral intake, and events leading up to the pain. So, sir, do you have any allergies to anything? No. Okay, and are you taking any medications? I take nitroglycerin. Okay, so is there a past medical history I should be aware of? I was diagnosed with angina about a year ago. Okay, and sir, when was the last time you had anything to eat or drink? I had soup and a sandwich about an hour ago. Okay, and what were you doing prior to this chest pain starting? Just sitting here watching television. Okay, now that we have obtained that sample history, the field impression I have of my patient is I have an adult male in his 50s experiencing this chest pain and discomfort. Next thing I want to do, because this appears to be a cardiovascular event, we're going to look, listen, and feel at the patient's chest. So I'm going to go ahead and start by palpating the chest of my patient. Sir, is there any pain on palpation here? No. Okay, next thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and listen to lung sounds. Okay, so take a nice deep breath for me. Okay, breathe out, and in, and out. Go ahead and breathe in, and out, and one more time in. 
Okay, how do my patient's lung sounds? Lung sounds are clear and equal bilaterally, no abnormalities upon palpation of the chest. Okay, so next thing I wanna do is I wanna obtain baseline vitals. So we're gonna obtain patient's blood pressure, we're gonna obtain his heart rate, we're gonna obtain a respiratory rate, and I want an updated on that pulse ox. So sir, if you could go ahead and lift up your left sleeve for me, I'm gonna go ahead and get a blood pressure cuff on you. Okay, thank you. Okay, you can go ahead and relax your arm down for me. Okay, so actual blood pressure is 135 over 90. Your patient's simulated blood pressure is 126 over 84. Okay, 126 over 84. Okay, so next thing I want to do is I'm going to check your pulse. So if I can have the inside of your wrist, please. Checking for that radial pulse. Okay, patient's actual pulse is 66 beats per minute. Your patient's simulated pulse is 110. Okay. Okay, next I want to check for his respiratory rate. Okay, patient's respiratory rate actually is going to be 12 respirations per minute. Your simulated patient's respiratory rate is 18. And what is going to be that updated pulse ox? Your patient is currently 96%. 96%, okay. Okay, so after getting those baseline vitals, what we're going to go ahead and do is it help administer an additional dose of nitro to our patient. So, sir, is this the prescription that is prescribed to you? Yes, by my doctor. Okay, and have you taken any doses of this so far today? Yes. Okay, and how about how long ago did you take any of this medication? Uh, about 30 minutes ago, oh, one dose. Just one dose? Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. And have you taken any sexually enhancing drugs within the last 72 hours? No. Okay, so after asking the critical questions to my patient, we're going to go ahead and dice the medication. So drug and dose, which is going to be nitroglycerin at 0 0.4 milligrams. Integrity of the bottle, we want to make sure that it's nice and intact. Then we want to check for color, concentration, and clarity, making sure it looks and appears to be good. And then expiration, this medication is not expired. So next thing I want to do, so sir, I'm going to take one of these pills. What I'm going to have you do is place it underneath your tongue and just let it dissolve there, okay? okay. So here's one of those pills. You can go ahead and put it under your tongue now. Okay, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and reassess our patient every five minutes because he's an unstable patient. ALS has arrived. Okay, so ALS has arrived. We're going to go ahead and give my report back to them. So I have an adult male in his mid-50s complaining of chest pain. He has a history of angina, was diagnosed about a year ago, and he has a prescription of nitroglycerin. He took one dose of his nitro about 30 minutes prior to our arrival, and we had just assisted him with a second dose. His current vital signs that I have listed, we have a blood pressure of 126 over 84. I have a pulse rate of 110 beats per minute. His respiratory rate is 18, and his updated pulse ox is going to be 96% we additionally have him on two liters of oxygen via nasal cannula. I have not had a chance to reassess my vitals because you have just showed up. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No.